All right, so gone are the days where you were required to write every single line of code if you want to develop a mobile app, a web app, or anything as such. But today we have a lot of AI tools such as Cursor AI, Replit Agent, V0, Bolt.new, and all of these tools are capable enough to create a full stack web application by giving simple text prompt. So you could go ahead and say, I want to develop a to-do app or maybe a sticky notes app or let's say a voice cloning app. And the AI will go ahead and write the code, test it out, debug the errors and even deploy the app in a single click. So as we already know, there are a lot of different AI coding tools out there. And the most popular ones are V0, Bolt.new, Cursor AI and Replit Agent. And today in this video, I will introduce some of the best AI coding tools out there. I'll give you a quick demo as to how to use the software or the app and also quickly go through the UI. And we'll also build a to-do app or something similar using all these AI tools. And without wasting further ado, let's jump straight in. All right, so first up, let's start with v0.dev. And this right here is v0.dev. And if you want to use v0.dev, all you gotta do is to visit v0.dev or the first link in the description below and sign up for a new virtual account. And once you create your account, you can go ahead and use the same virtual account to log into v0.dev. And once you log into your account, this is going to be the interface that you will see. And this right here is the free version. And on the homepage itself, you can find a input box asking you to ask v0 a question. So this is where we will tell what stuff that we want to develop. And also you can attach images for references and also import from Figma and convert it into code as well. Now in this context, let's say I want to build a simple to-do app or a sticky notes app in Next.js. So all I got to do is to say, create a to-do app in Next.js. So all I got to do is to this. And now let's say if you want to create a bit more complex apps, include authentication, implement databases and a dedicated backend or API route, you can go ahead and sort of include all these uh, requirements and features that you want in your app in the exact same uh, text box and click on the send option and the AI will include all that features. And now if you want to build an initial prototype or the first MVP, you can go ahead and give a simple prompt, something like this, create a to-do app in Next.js and afterwards you can go ahead and give further prompts. For example, let me go ahead and send it. And within seconds, the AI or the v0.dev in this case will start writing the code. And the best part is that v0 is capable enough to write the code and also run it and show the output on the screen as well. I mean, let me show you what I'm talking about. So first, let's just wait till it is completed. And this right here is the interface of v0. So you can go ahead and send a message and towards the right side, you will find a code editor and also a preview of the app. So once the code generation process is done, you will be able to find a preview by going to this page right here. And if you head back to this code page, you'll be able to find code for all the pages like the page.tsx file, action.ts file, add todo.txx file. I mean, you'll be able to find all of these files from here. And if you want to view the console for logs, you can click on the console option and you'll be able to find all these, you know, uh, console. And right now we have an error that says the file lib slash prisma cannot be found. Make sure the file exists. All right. And now to view the preview of the app, all you gotta do is to head over to this preview tab. And as you could probably already tell, we have an error and it says the file lib slash prisma cannot be found. So we can go ahead. All right. So it is using prisma for now. I'll go ahead and say, I don't want to use prisma create a simple web app okay now it's trying to implement database and other complex uh, features and if i were to implement all that features it will the video will be extremely long so right now i just wanted to create a simple version of the to-do app and if you want to you can go ahead and connect database and do all that cool stuff but for now i want to develop a simple app so let's wait all right so we have a simple to-do app in here so you can go ahead and enter let's say task one add task two and add you can mark it as completed and if you want to, you can go ahead and delete it as easy as that. So we did not write a single line of code yet. We were able to create a to do app. And now let's say I want to add a sticky note section to the exact same app and also a nav bar to the top where I can access the to do app and also the sticky notes app. So all I got to do is to add a sticky notes app to the same project and add a nav bar to the top with links to to do app and uh, let's say sticky notes i can go ahead and hit enter 
and the AI will start writing the code for this. And this way, the same way, you can go ahead and further ask to implement more and more features and eventually develop whatever kind of web tool that you want to. And for starters, v0.dev is from Vercel, the same team behind Next.js and all of the projects that you create in v0.dev is going to use Next.js. So that's also one important thing that you need to know. And here you can also find the list of files it has modified or generated and upon clicking it, it will open up that as well. And now as you can see, we have the initial version of our to-do app in here. And if I click on the sticky notes app, you will be able to find the sticky note and I can go ahead and say note one, click on add note and we have our note in here. Maybe add note three, note five, see? it is getting a random color every time we add a new note. So if you want to edit the content, you have the option to edit the content as well. Click on save, delete, everything is working. So this is v0.dev and you can go ahead and build even more complex apps using this uh, website v0.dev. So all you gotta do is to sign up for a free account and start using the same. And yeah, that's for v0.dev. All right, so this right here is bold.new and it is yet another AI platform that you can use to build and deploy full stack web applications. And again, Similar to V0, you have a big, huge input box to the center and you can go ahead and enter whatever app that you want to develop. In this context, let's say I want to build a sticky notes app and this time around, I should be able to drag and move the sticky notes around the screen. And this time also, let's just go ahead and say, I want to develop a to-do app. So all I got to say is create a to-do app website with, let's say drag and drop feature and let's see what it comes up with. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And now as soon as you give a prompt, the AI will start writing the code and the UI will change in a bit. And as you can see towards the left side, we have the instructions and all the chat history and everything else. And you can also find the progress in here. And towards the right side, you can find a code editor like interface. And also below you have this terminal interface as well. And here you can find all the files that are within your project, like the app.tsx file, todo.tss file, vite config file, and all that. And for this one, actually we are using React, not Next.js. So if you remember correctly, V0 used Next.js, but for this one, we are actually using a React. So these these are all the files and you can find the code for the same in here as well. And if you want to view the preview, all you gotta do is to click on this preview option and you should be able to see a full screen preview. You can click on this option and there you have it a full screen preview. And next up, let's just say I want to add a new note. I can say task one, click on our task and we have it in here. Next up, let's say task two, add it in here and task three. And as you can see, the cool thing about this implementation right here is that we have implemented a drag and drop functionality as well. And first up, you can go ahead and mark a uh, task as completed. In fact, you can even go ahead and delete it. All right. And now if you want to, you can also go ahead and drag and drop and rearrange the task. All right. So this is how simple it is to create a web app using bolt.new. And if you want to add even more functionality, you can go ahead and do that. For example, I would say, I also want to add a sticky notes section to the same app with drag and drop functionality all right so i can go ahead and hit enter and let's wait for a few seconds and bold.new will get this whole thing done and another interesting thing about bold.new is that you can go ahead and click on this deploy option and deploy whatever app that you created using netlify in a single click and that's also one important thing that you must know and for now let's just wait for the update to complete all right, so it seems like bold.new is done writing the updated code and it has added the new feature that we asked for that is sticky notes and let's see if it works. So I can quickly move over to this preview tab and this time around if I put it in full screen, you can find two sections that is task and notes. And if you click on this new notes option, a new sticky note will be shown and if you click on another time, here we have another one and we have another one and another one okay and right now these nodes are all over the place you can go ahead and give further prompts to fix it and yeah that's how simple it is to create a web app using bold.new and if you want to you can also go ahead and upload files in here and images for reference and ask it to code the same and bold.new will get this thing done in no time and if you want to deploy it you can go ahead and click on this deploy option and it will go ahead and build the application and deploy the same to netlify and will give you a live url that you can use to access the app as well as to manage the app within your netlify account so that's all about bold.new and as you can see, the site is now deployed. And if I click on this uh, URL right here, I should be able to access the app. And there we have it. Add new task. 
everything is in place and everything works. So that's for Bolter new. The next one in our list is Replit Agent and Replit Agent is yet another AI coding tool where you can go ahead and give provide simple text prompt and convert it into a web application. And for this one also, we'll go ahead and try to build a to-do app. So I'll go ahead and say create a to-do app and click on enter. And this is the interface of Replit Agent. So all you gotta do is to go to replit.com, sign up for an account. And once you sign up, this is going to be the interface that you'll see. And now the approach of coding with Replit is a little different from the other ones. So I'll go ahead and first give my initial prompt or whatever content or whatever type of web app that I want to generate. And Replit Agent will do an analysis and shows all the options. And you can go ahead and select the ones that you want and click on the approve plan and start option. And it will instantly start writing the code. And again, the UI is pretty similar to that of V0 and Bolt. Towards the left side, we have the instruction section uh, with the chat history and all that. And towards the right side, we have the progress section, the web view, the demo and all that. And if you want to view the files within your project, you can click on this option right here, open files, and it should show all the files that you have within your project. All right. And another cool thing about Droplet is that it allows you to choose your text stack that you want to use. So if you use V0 or Bolt, you will, you are pretty much locked to, let's say a couple of these options, right? Now Replit agent has much more support for different variety of text stack. And as for this one, it seems like it's just creating a simple static website, uh, using HTML, JS and CSS. And okay. We have also have Flask that means Python. And apart from all that, there isn't any fancy tech or framework or anything that is being used for this particular project right here. In which ways let's wait and the agent is working so as you can see for the backend it is using python using a flask server and seems like the coding part is almost done and as you can see it says i noticed the flask server is not running correctly and let me check the issues and fix them so Replit encountered an error and it is fixing the error all by itself and yeah let's just wait for it to complete loading everything all right so it seems like Replit agent is done writing the code and i'll click on this option to open the web view so that we can see a preview of our app. And this right here is the to-do list app that Replit has created for us. And I can go ahead and give a task, click on our task. And well, seems like it's not working. Oh yes, it does. So we have the task added in here. And now I can go ahead and add another task, click on our task again. And now as we are not using any dedicated framework or library, the whole thing is a little bit slow. And every time I click on this R task option, the page is getting refreshed. That's because we are not, we are just using simple uh, JavaScript, uh, HTML and you know, Python backend. But if you use React or Next.js or any other thing, it will be a bit more snappy is what I would say. And you can go ahead and edit the task. We have a nice pop-up in here and I can say task updated, click on save changes and the page should refresh and we have the updated task in here and I can go ahead and click on delete and the task should be gone and yes all right so this is how simple it is to create a web app using rapid.com so all you gotta do is to give whatever prompts or suggestions or whatever features that you want to add in the left section right here and you can find a real-time preview of the same and if you want to view the dev tools you can click on this dev tools option and it will show you the console elements network tab resources settings and whatnot Okay. And if you want to view the preview, you can click on the progress section right here and to view the files, we have all the files in here as easy as that. All right. So, so far we have used bolt.new v0 and Replit agent, and all of them are like a web platform for you to build apps, test it and deploy it. Right. And now what if you want to use AI within your local environment, or let's say you want AI within the IDE that is installed on your computer. Now that's where cursor AI comes into play. So the first thing that you're going to do is to head over to cursor.com and sign up for a new account and download and install this AI code editor. And now for starters, cursor AI is like a IDE that is built on top of visual studio code but with added AI capabilities so once you download and install a uh, cursor this is going to be the interface that you'll see and for this one I quickly created a new folder called as to do dragged and dropped it to cursor and I went ahead and just entered npx create next app at the latest and dot slash and I initialized a next.js project all right so that's what I did so far and now to develop the actual app all I gotta do is to click on this icon right here and click on this cursor composer mode and now cursor composer is where the AI will go ahead and create the files menu, edit the code add code and do all that stuff for you and now we have already initialized an XJS project right so all I'm saying is I want to build a to-do app in Next.js. I have already installed Next.js with app router and 
TypeScript, all right? So this is the prompt that I'll give and I'll go ahead and hit enter and let's wait for a few seconds. So as you can see, the AI has started writing the code for the same and let's just wait till it is done. All right, so it seems like the AI is done writing the code and to accept the changes, all you gotta do is to click on this accept all button and all the changes that AI has made will be accepted and will be made live. And if you want to, you can also go through file after file and click on individually accept or reject these uh, uh, changes as well. And for now, I'll go ahead and click on this accept all changes option and let's see. And now we'll close this one. And to run the project, I'll go ahead and type npm run dev and hit enter and it will open up the development server for us in localhost 3000 and there we have it. And if I press command and click on this link, it should open it up in a new tab and let's see what cursor has coded for us. And as you can see, we have a simple to do app in here. I can go ahead and add task one, click on add and the colors are a bit off and I think the reason is we already have custom stylings in our Sailwind CSS. And if I remove these, let's say all these code, everything should be ready. Yeah, all good to go. I can go ahead and enter task two, click on add, click on delete, maybe add a new one and mark them as completed as easy as that. So how that's how simple it is to create a web app using Cursor AI. Now the interesting thing about Cursor AI is that it's actually a IDE that is running locally on your machine but with added AI capabilities. So even if you've been working on a project on Next.js, you can go ahead and open that same project using Cursor and start using AI to code the stuff, right? Now if you want to collaboratively work on a project and if you want, if you want to code and alongside if you want AI to help you, I guess this is the perfect way to do so and that's for Cursor AI. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If yes, make sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next one.